We're just waiting to have some people join us. How you guys doing today? Wait a few few more seconds, minutes. See if somebody can come on and join us today. Get my things all set up here. We are finally. Okay. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Linda, and I'm the face behind Crafty Lady. I'm so glad to see you guys today. Uh, trying a few more things. I'm just going to do a real short video today. We're going to talk about uh, bows, we're going to talk about fabric bows and how to make fabric bows because that's what I made. I actually put on my Americana flag and I had some people ask me about them. So we're going to talk about making uh, fabric bows today. So anyway, good day to you. Today, I think it's Thursday. <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think it's Thursday because I've been uh, working from home for <laughs> about eight weeks now and one day runs right into the other so it's uh, really confusing but anyway how are you guys doing today I hope you're having a good day it's nice and sunny out today here in Pennsylvania um, it's a pretty day it's about in the um, low 60s I think but you do need a sweatshirt when you go out uh, no rain though so that's good so anyway let's uh, Let's take a look at um, let's take a look at this bow and talk about making the bow. And didn't I have a bunch of computer work going on today, so I didn't really have time to be able to get into doing some painting. So I thought, well, we'll talk about bows. Anyway, um, let me just get things adjusted here. Try to get everything in sight so you can see what's going on. I moved, I moved my uh, my mount. Try to. That's not. That's not working real well. Let's see. Whoops. Everything catching up with. There we go. Okay, good. I think we got it now. So actually, um, let me let me go out a little bit with this. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Move this wire in the way. Hey, work from home. It is what it is. Hashtag work from home. So much fun. Anyway, um, this is the bow that we're going to talk about today. Totally made out of fabric. Um, get rid of this. I like these kind of bows for some pieces because they really um, make make Americana Americana. It may it, it looks. Uh, a little bit more rustic. I like the colors for this particular piece. Um, I like the simplicity of it. When I did, I used to do ceramics years ago, and when I would put bows on pieces that were ceramic, a lot of times we would use um, fabric bows because ribbons didn't always do the job correctly or how I wanted them to. So, anyway, the colors in this piece. Um, the Americana piece that I did were ivory colors and browns, navy. There is such a delay on this. Okay, let's go up here. There we go. 
ivories and the blue, the ivory here with the, with the star and the browns that are in there. And you'll see if you look at the ribbons, uh, the material that I picked, this is what I usually try to do. I try to match the colors. So this kind of tannish color goes with this and accents it and kind of makes it stick out and makes it really look look pretty and pops gives it attention then we've got the navy blues this is lighter but the navy blue and the red and the the ivory color so everything kind of like mixes together and it makes it appealing and then I did put pick one pattern that was a bunch of flags um, I just liked it I liked the way it looked with the piece so that's what I picked those pieces for. So let's get to it and I'll show you the simple way that I make a bow. Hopefully it'll work for me. <laughs> let's, let's hope. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit because this seems to be where I need to view what you guys are looking at. Put my light up there. Cool, that works. Okay, so here's my fabrics. So what I do first, what I've done, is go to the salvage ends of your fabric. And let me put the bow out of the way here. Okay, so I'm gonna go and find the salvage end of the fabric. Um, the salvage ends of your yardage is the finished edge so that the pieces don't fray. It's right along that edge and see how it's finished and it it won't fray where the cut edge going crosswise on this piece this is also the salvage right here because it's finished so it doesn't fray now this is the cut piece so this does fray you see from previous the threads are loose and they're going to come undone so that we want to we want to uh I rip fabric if I can. If it's 100% cotton, you can rip it because it just makes a, a nicer finish. The edge of it's better. I like it. I like the, the way it looks. It's a little tattered and torn, but that's that's the look that I was looking for. I'm sorry. I'm going to move this up again. Okay. So you go to the edge of the fabric, not to uh, find the salvage. And that's where you're going to start ripping your fabric. So I'm going to get my scissors. And I do about an inch and a half or two inches. So find your salvage, eyeball it, and I'm going to go to about there. You cut through the salvage. Okay, and once you get through that salvage, then you just rip it and you'll get a straight piece that way. So rip it all the way across. Well, that was not, okay, this happens sometimes. See how it came and the, the fabric was not straight. So that was not the side that I was cutting from before. So what you do then is you just keep, it's a good learning experience. Go back down here, do it again until you get a, a straight tear across your whole, whole piece of fabric, the whole width, which we, we are most likely getting this time. Yes, we are. So we got all the way to the other end. So that's good. And then you just clip the end where that salvage, salvage is. And you've got a good straight cut. Okay, so we're going to go back over here. And we're going to, again, since we have it straight now, along that whole edge, we, we're straight. So we're going to go back in here. And we're going to eyeball about one and a half, two inches. And I'm going to cut that fabric, cut through the salvage. Now we should be able to get a full piece to go all the way across. Just rip it across. That way you get the straight grain of the fabric. At the other end where your salvage is, that will not rip. So you're going to cut that. Now I like to cut those salvages or tear those salvages off. So I made a little cut right next to that salvage. And you just pull that off. And get rid of that that's trash go back to the other end and do the same thing you're gonna go right here and you can't see the salvage but there's a finished edge you're gonna go there make a little cut and then pull that off and you're good 
So your piece is all, this piece is ready to go. So I actually have four of these to make. I'm not going to rip them apart now, but I have four more to do. So we'll put that aside for now and get our other piece. Um, we're done with this fabric. So now we have this navy blue, blue pattern with red stars and tan stars. Everything kind of is in the same family and it all, all works together and complements each other. So I have one straight edge. I, hopefully I can find it. I think this, this side is kind of looks it. So I'm going to go in here and see where your salvage is. Once again, you're going to cut through that salvage and we're going to go and rip that. We're using three coordinating fabrics. I usually like to use three. Um, it just makes the, the makes the bow a little more interesting. Okay, we're to the other end now, so we're going to go back in here and cut that. We're done with this piece. Put that aside. And we're going to go in here, and we're going to get rid of that salvage edge. It's not very pretty. See how it looks? So you want to get rid of that. So pull that across. And then you just try to... If you have a bunch of threads hanging, you might want to just rip them. They can rip, they'll rip off the whole way because you have that actually straight along the grain of the fabric. Now we'll go to the other end, see where the salvage is. Okay, so we're going to go in here. We're going to cut it and then rip that across. Get rid of those extra threads. Either now or later, sometime there. They'll be in the way. Okay, so there's your second piece of fabric. All ready to go. Just like a ribbon. Okay, and now we have our third piece. Third piece of material that we have, and this is the tan colored with the blue. Uh, this has blue stars, navy blue stars on it. So find where your straight edge is that was already ripped. We have lots of... Okay, we'll be. Okay, this was the straight edge here, I think. So go, go here to the edge of the fabric where the salvage is, and you're going to cut about an inch and a half, almost two inches, through the salvage, and rip this one. you're at the other edge you just clip that you're done with that piece of material um, try to straighten it out a bit get rid of your extra threads and go in here cut it right there so that you can pull this end off. Okay, I ended up with the extra extra threads coming out and coming loose. So, <laughs> I love fabric. I, I, I just, I sew also. And I just love fabric. I love all the pretty colors. I love everything about it. Uh, you dream about what you can make. Um, this is from my stash. From collections that I've had that I was going to make, uh, pillows, wreaths, uh, table runners, placemats, none of that other, other happened. You always have all these plans. I don't know about you guys, but I always have all these plans and things never get done. My husband just says, oh, you got a lot of really good ideas. You just never finish anything. And he's true, but aren't all crafters that way? I mean, that's, that's how we are. So... I admit it. It's there's nothing wrong with it. That's it's a crafty mind, and we're untidy. So okay, and just pull this out. Um, other family members have called me a hoarder, along with my husband, but I don't care. I mean, there's always a reason to keep something that maybe you might be able to use it. Um, some, but if you can't use it, maybe somebody else can. I don't know. I I don't think of it as hoarding, but 
I guess most people would. We're not the tidy, crafting people are not the tidiest people, especially in our workshops or my house. Um, it's not always the best that it should be. Um, but hey, if you're going to look at my house and look at my untidiness, then I don't need you in my life because that's not what I'm about. So I'm sorry people feel that way. But anyway, that's the way it is. All right, we got our three pieces all cut now or torn, I should say. So we have this star piece that's on a, a tan background. Then we have the dark, darker color, which is the navy blue that has, has stars, red and tan color. And then we have the piece that's going to offset them both. And all the colors, you can see all the colors are from the same family. Basically, they're burgundies from the the flag, the burgundies, and then the tan colors, and then the navy blues. Tan is here, and then the navy blue. This doesn't have red in it, but they look nice together. They're pleasing to the eye, and that's what you want. And most all, most off, you want it to coordinate with the piece that you're putting that bow on. So you want it to coordinate with the red stripes. It's a not, it's a darker red. You want it to coordinate with the tan that's got the, the burnt umber. We did we talked about that yesterday when I was doing the shading. That's burnt umber. And then the tan and then the navy blue. This is navy blue with white, white, white and blue mixed together, dry brushed over the top. So it makes it a lot lighter than what this is, but it still works. They all look together. They, they look okay together. Everything works. Everything complements each other, and that's what you want. You want things to complement each other and look good together. And that's, that's, that's the bottom line. We want it to be pleasing to the eye. So these colors were, I really, I was excited when I found the, the material and I liked how it looked. So let me see if I can readjust this a little bit so we can talk more. Okay, so lay your pieces out. This is the bow that was already made. So I'm going to lay that over here. So you can, let's see, you can see it over here better. Okay. You had a really bad glare from the lights. There, that's better. Okay, so this is what this is what our end product this made this way is going to end up as. Um, there's quite a few ways you can make a bow. Um, I played around with this quite a few different ways to try to, to find what I wanted. And once again, whatever kind of a piece that you're putting on determines how you're going to go about doing that. So find the middle. First off, take your pieces, put your, your tails together. Okay, like I did here, you put the tails together, or close, anyway, find the middle. Okay, so fold that down, and then take this piece, put your two tails together, find the middle, alright, and then take this piece, put your tails together, Tails are together and find the middle. That's the best way to do. That way your tails will be pretty close. They won't be perfect, but they'll be close. Okay. Okay, now some people will just take, there's different ways, like I said, that you can, you can do this. So I normally like to use the patterned the pattern piece, put a dark contrast against that, and then put the lighter piece towards the bottom. That's just me personally. You can do whatever you want to do, however you like. But that's pretty much how I gauge it, and that looks appealing to me on my pieces. 
so we're just going to put those together like that. Now you can do a lot of different things. You can actually just tie this in the middle if you want to. Just tie it. Let me get my flag over here. So you can actually just tie it together. Uh, that's real, really rustic looking that way. Um, make sure when you, you have to fiddle around with fabric quite a bit. Let's turn it over this way. Maybe it'll be, you want to make sure that the right, right uh, side of the fabric is the one that's showing out to the front that you're going to see. Otherwise you're seeing the back and it's, it's not real pretty that way. So this is one way of making uh, making a bow or an attachment to look like a bow. Um, see how you just kind of like wiggle it around, finagle it, kind of make things go how you want them to. And then you can attach that. We staple, staple the bows to our pieces when it's wood. This is a, actually a door hanger or it could be a wall hanger. So you would just staple it like so and uh, I don't know I, I just wasn't real happy with the way that that looked let me see if I can make this no okay I wasn't real happy with how that really looked I wanted more of a bow on there so I nixed that idea Okay, so we want more of like a how you learn to tie your shoe kind of bow in kindergarten <laughs> type thing. So you can do that a couple different ways. I untied that. Now you want to, okay, make sure your fabrics are all lined up the right way, and they are. Okay, so the next way is to actually tie a knot which is how we've learned when most, most people learn when they're in kindergarten to tie their shoe. So you're going to tie a knot. Okay, then you're going to just tie a regular bow. You're going to make one loop come out here over here. You're going to take this loop, you're going to go around. And I don't know, there was different sayings. I don't remember what they were, but you go through the tunnel. So make sure your, your fabric is right side out and stick it through. And that gives you a, a nice little bow. Now you got to finagle around, finagle around, and get everybody on board. Make sure that the right sides are the right sides are showing. But you've got a nice bow there that way. I like this side better for this part over here. So just pull it out. Put everybody where they belong. You can pull it tight. Let your tails hang down. But see this way you used a lot of the fabric. So you don't have a lot to hang down. That's okay if you don't want a lot to hang down on your, your piece. Then you just, you would attach it here. You would staple it. But you don't have a lot hanging down. And I didn't really like that. I didn't like, that's not how I make those. I started um, painting ceramics in the 70s and in the 70s the teacher that I had my mom and I would go it was after we got married and my mom and I would go for our girls night out and we would go to the local ceramic shop and we had a teacher there who taught me how taught us how to make bows this way now I've had trouble doing this because it doesn't always work but I'm gonna try to show you the correct way and how I was taught to do it and it it does take a lot of finagling around but the middle of our piece the middle of our um, fabric is right here so you're gonna lay that down is the best way and like I said it took me a long time to here to figure and remember how to do this and bring your two pieces down that are gonna be the loops this is gonna be a loop and this is gonna be a loop over here okay so you're gonna cross them over each other, I believe was re was how it was done. Yeah, we used to do this with with little quarter inch ribbon for our ceramic pieces, 
especially I had a I had a an Easter bunny that I would make and it was mom and she was holding two or three kids like in her in their apron and everybody got a little bow either in their ear and their under their chin or something but we would take that quarter piece ribbon and tie a little bow and this is where I really really learned how to make bows so anyway uh, the little bows but I haven't made them for years so when I did this on my uh, my kite flag here the other day it was a real challenge I have to be honest with you and it does take a learning curve everything takes a learning curve so anyway but you get your pieces out like so you have to you have to make it bigger than what you actually want the ending to be hi Ruth I'm glad you came on and watch thanks for joining us hope you're having a good day today so anyway um, we're gonna take these two two sides of the loops and we're gonna bring them in and that's what you're gonna tie together so you're going to cross one over top of the other and pull it down through that little hole that you found that you have so once again you have your piece here's the center okay and you're gonna pull your two loops out over here and then you're gonna go in here here these are crossing over one another and then you're just gonna cross over and pull that down in through the, the little hole there and tie it now you got to make everybody go where they need to go so you go back out here <laughs> once again make sure that the right right side of the fabric is showing okay so this is kind of am I still in the picture here yeah so I want to make sure that I turn this I turn my loops let's see this side which side looks better and easier I think this side is so you're going to pull it, get it to the right, pretty much length or width, width that you want your bow to be. Okay, so try to get these all even so they all match. And, um, or get close. And it takes a lot of finagling around, but you're going to pull your loops apart. I usually try to put the pattern in the middle. It just accents it, makes it look better. Over here, you're going to try to match up that side. So navy blue is on the top. So I'm going to pull the navy blue up and put that on the top. Am I still in the picture yet? So navy blue is up here. The pattern's in the middle, and then put your tan down on the bottom. And then you've got the center together there. Now these are backwards, so you got to go in here and try to like turn it around so that everybody's in the same direction just looks better that way it's more pleasing to the eye it accents your piece a lot better so that's just the way that's the way I've done it that's the way I was taught to do it and it's what works so once again this pattern piece you can see the difference this is the right side um, it's hard to tell the lights okay so this has to be turned too because showing the wrong side so just kind of pull it around there pull your pieces down and there you go that's how I made the bow for this door, this door hanger or wall hanging whichever whoever has it would want it to be however the next step would be to staple it to your piece and then you can actually really finagle things around and make make them stand out the way you want it to because it doesn't always work this way sometimes I, I would probably take this and untie it and redo it but in pretty much that's what we got that's how we did everything and that's how you make your fabric bows so we're gonna go down here then and let's see go this way okay I'm still learning guys it's a learning curve <laughs> so anyway um, going to find out the, the side that 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 sits flattest the best or that works the best for for how you want your your piece to uh, your bow to look and what where you want the pieces 
to go. This one keeps on turning on me, so that's probably going to have to get stapled down. Um, but anyway, what you're going to do then is lay your pieces, lay your fabric out, lay your fabric where you need it to go. And then the secret here is that nobody knows, uh, <laughs> excuse me, nobody knows about is that you're going to staple it and staple it in place. And you can put it exactly where you want. So you would go in here and you, with your stapler, you're going to go in behind here. Try to staple that to that wood to hold it. And then you're going to go and pull these up. You would go on the inside so your staples aren't going to show. And you're just going to staple the bow in place where you need it to go. And then if you need to put these in a certain spot and make them and hold them, go ahead and staple it if you want to or glue it, whatever you need to do. But that way you can get it to uh, stay where you want it to. So that's how I made the, uh, the fabric bow for this piece. Um, I had, wait, that way. Rotate my phone. <laughs> okay, so I, this is, I had some, piece, some people ask me, um, how about this way? It's telling me to rotate my phone. Okay, there we go. So I've had people um, ask me about the bow and whether it was fabric and how I made it. So I just thought I would jump on here real quick. I didn't have anything ready to be painted, but I thought I would jump on real quick and, you know, just let you guys know sometimes bows are intimidating, especially if they're with fabric. But that's how I make my bows for primitive items to make them, uh, to make them... Americana, what do you want to say? Um, primitive. Like I said, a lot of my ceramic pieces that I used to make, um, that's how we did it. That's how I was taught. And that's that's what I that's what I liked. And that's what I liked for this particular piece. Sorry for making you seasick there, all you guys. But anyway, um, so that's what I wanted to show you today. So thanks a lot, Ruth, for stopping by. Um, appreciate, appreciate your company. Um, I just wanted to get on here too and talk to you guys a little bit about, oh my, I'm looking at it on the computer and I'm really making you guys seasick. I'm going all over the place. I'm so sorry. Like I said, it's a learning experience. So, okay, I'm sideways. How about if I do this? Is that going to work? Hopefully. Oh well. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys a little bit about where I'm going with this. I have a bunch of uh, uh, computer work that I'm going to try to do today. And why is my, why am I sideways? Now I'm upside down. <laughs> hey, work from home. Hashtag work from home. <laughs> This is hysterical. Um, this is as bad as the first day was. There we go. Hopefully that'll work. But anyway, um, wanted to just talk to you guys a little bit about um, where I'm going with this. And come on, turn around. My computer is lagging behind me, so I can't really see. I'm still upside down, I guess. There we go. I'm turning now. <laughs> oh, this is funny. I'm so sorry. I'm glad I'm glad you're the only one watching Ruth. It makes me feel better. You're an old friend, so you can understand. <laughs> but anyway, um, come on, we need to go a little bit further. Um, the the direction that I'm going with this, um, this whole crafty lady thing at this point with the COVID uh, coronavirus, um, I ordered a specific um, mount for my camera. I got to get this straight. You can't turn your phone while you're recording. I know that. I got to fix this. Let's go, guys. So anyway, I ordered a, a mount for my camera, so hopefully this is not going to happen all the time because <laughs> this is embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. But anyway, um... Whoops, now I'm upside down, so let's go all the way this way. <laughs> I, I would bail out if I was you. <laughs> anyway, um, yesterday was really good. Everything worked out good. But, um, yeah, let me put you in here. Hey, we 
we all have to learn, you know? There. Okay. So I've got this pizza pizza stand in front of me that's holding that I used. There are now I'm straight. Okay. So I got this pizza stand in front of me that's holding my camera. Uh, you talk about uh, the people that I follow online and that I talk to and some groups that I belong to. Are, it's hysterical. Cre hey, creative people have it made, you know? Like, we just figure it out, and if it doesn't work, you go on and figure it out again. But people have used selfie sticks with toilet paper rolls, and they pile them up and put their selfie stick in the top to take their, their camera we got all different things. Um, I tried one day to paint and hold my camera. That was a total disaster. Um, then I, uh, I did a couple different things, but this seems to work the best, but it's a pizza stand that I use as a drying rack and I have my camera attached to the top of it along with the selfie light up here. Um, Cause you need these ring lights. You need all this stuff that I don't have yet. So anyway, um, Moving forward with Crafty Lady, um, with the cor coronavirus, COVID, um, I've been at home working since March the, what, 14th, 15th, something like that, when school closed. And trying to take this business forward, because I never had the time before I was working two jobs. I quit Amazon right before that. I worked at Amazon part-time at home, from home. And then... Um, when school school closed and we didn't know exactly what was going to happen or what was going what was going on going forward but they told us that we had to work from home so we only have a, a some work to do but it was like what am i going to do with all my time well i've been wanting to get this business up and running so this was my perfect opportunity so i've been taking lessons i've been doing computer work i've been working with people and trying to step forward and of course Wayne's saying to me where's the money where's the money like it's gonna come all immediate and it doesn't happen that way it takes time it takes it takes a lot of time so moving forward what what I'm going to be doing in the next few weeks is uh, virtual online parties or virtual teaching so once I get this uh, phone situation straightened out so that I'm not upside down all the time and I figure it all out and I get my mount, I ordered the mount for the camera and all the equipment and it's back ordered of course because everybody's online right now, everybody's trying to run businesses from online so there's all kinds of people out there and they bought up all the equipment so June the 15th is when I'm going to actually get this piece of uh, equipment that I can put my phone on and steadily hold it so I don't have to and I'll be able to paint. Uh, Ruth, take a look at my video from yesterday. It was a little better. I was doing some shading and it worked out a lot better. So hopefully you, you'll see that and you won't think that I'm a complete idiot here <laughs> trying to do this. But anyway, I'm going to be moving forward with um, virtual paint parties and art kits and some some lessons online. I'll be setting up another Facebook page. Crafty Lady will be the main page, but there'll be um, kind of like a satellite going off of it, another Facebook page, where you'll be able to, if interested, or whoever, anybody that happens to come on and watch this with a replay or my social media posts, Instagram, Pinterest, and all of those, um, go out to people and they get interested or they say hey who's this this lady that can't <laughs> what her can't film right can't everybody everything's upside down <laughs> who's this idiot <laughs> anyway we all have to learn right I'm just trying to tell myself that and trying to move forward but it is hard sometimes it really is but anyway um, I'll be showing some pieces and some drawings that will start out and beginner's level or if you're more advanced or you do do painting or you have any idea about painting there'll be more media, medium level painting or you can take it to the next level and you can um, go with advanced painting which then you would blend the colors more so like the beginner it's basically kind of like it's not a paint by number because you can use whatever colors you want but I will furnish you with the line drawing, I'll furnish you with the paint, and I'll furnish you with the brushes if you buy the kit. Or the virtual class, I would be doing totally online, and I would furnish you with the line drawing and the instructions, and you would buy your own materials. 
There would be a nominal cost, of course, for that because I'm providing all that information for you, but that's the direction that I'm going right now with Crafty Lady, along with trying to make my own finished pieces. But it's so expensive to ship items that are finished that I just don't know that that's what I really want to do. I do have an Etsy shop. It's empty right now. Um, going into the fourth quarter, which will be Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, hopefully. I mean, I'm working on trying to get items together now to be able to sell at that point. I've been working feverish, feverishly painting all the time on my time off from school to try to get this up and running, figure out what direction I'm going. So if you're at all interested, please keep keeping you know, keep watching, keep keep looking out, keep um, seeing what I'm up to. If you're not interested and you just want to be entertained by this idiosyncrasy of not being able to film correctly, then, hey, it's a comedy show. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope you weren't totally bored. I hope that, you know, everything, it, it's a comedy show. Uh, Paula. I see that you just signed on. Thanks so much for stopping. I appreciate it. I'm kind of wrapping up here. Today we talked about making a bow. I don't know if you've ever tried to make bows out of fabric, but basically this is what I made today. And I showed you how. I didn't do any painting today, but I showed you how to make this bow. I tear it from fabric, from yardage. We tear pieces and then how I um, basically tied it together three different ways. There was three different ways of doing it. And then this is going to go on this door hanger that I showed on my uh, my page before. It's going to go to the bottom. You just staple it at the bottom and you're good to go. So anyway, that's that. Um, I was talking about the fact that um, since I've been out of school for two months now, I'm trying to work um, forward and move forward with Crafty Lady. This might, I don't know if this is something you're interested in or not, but pass it around to your family members and let them know I'll be moving forward with virtual paint lessons online, virtual classes uh, where you can actually, you don't have to go anywhere, so we're social distancing in our homes. So you're very comfortable. You can even do it in your PJs if you want. It doesn't matter to me. I have one one of my teachers that always says, just make sure make sure you have something on top. I don't care what you wear from the waist down, if nothing. You don't have to even wear nothing, but as long as you're dressed from the waist up, then I'm okay with it. So anyway, um, this is the direction that I'm going. So I'm trying to build an audience and trying to get people out there. If you have anybody that's interested, tell them to come over to Crafty Lady and like, like the page. I'll be moving forward with a satellite page that will have sign-up instructions if you would want to purchase uh, kits or purchase the classes online. We can have a big paint party. We can all go on together on Zoom and paint together. I can record videos, put them up, furnish you with the line drawings, furnish you with the pictures, directions, supply lists, everything that you need going forward to have a good time if you're interested. I'll also be branching out later. Uh, once I get things under control, I also sew, I do florals, I make wreaths. You name it, I probably do it. But right now, I'm taking this to the next level because everybody's kind of quarantined at home, and this is what we need things to do at home, especially for our kids. Kids love to paint. Kids love to say, hey, Mom, you know, this is what I made. I didn't get it going before Mother's Day, unfortunately. Father's Day, I don't know if I can do that or not. I'm trying. <laughs> but anyway, that's where we're going with Crafty Lady. So any, anyway, guys, I'll let you go. I was going to make this really short today, but... We talked about the bow, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again in the future. Um, take care. Have a good day. Um, thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And let me know. Let me know your email. Then I can start building my list. Um, message me if you want, direct message, however you want to. If you're interested at all in, in some of the painting, I'll be like I said, I'll be setting up a page that you would be actually be able to um, register on. But remember, remember all you guys are awesome. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay quarantined until we can get out of this mess because that's what it is. It is the biggest mess. Never thought in my life that I would have to be the, living this way. If my mom and dad were alive, I don't know. I, I just can't imagine what they would be thinking. But anyway, I bid you a crafty lady. Day ladies, I bid you a really crafty, 
good time, and thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate the support. Bye-bye.